All right. So let's talk about fresh. Uh, but before we do, you have to see this. All right. Good enough. <laughs> you had enough of that. <laughs> That's uh, what's her name? Chen. Uh, what the fuck is her name? Mrs. Chen. Let's just call her Mrs. Chen. Li is it Leela? Lila Chen? I can't even remember what her name is. Yeah. 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 That's the girl. And uh, I'm just going to point out a few things. So I got some other, that's, that is a very long video and I didn't want to show you the entire thing because you're going to see a lot of it here in just a minute. Uh, I forget the guy who's doing this outline, but I just want to like catch you. Oh, Daisy Chen. Thank you very much. Daisy. Daisy. Really? Okay. Um, I want to show you this. Uh, I, apologies. I don't know who the dude is who's uh, who's where I pulled this video from, but it's pretty thorough. I, I'm not going to let the whole thing go, but I'm just going to sort of uh, just riff on this for a minute here. Fresh and Fit Podcast just got exposed by an IG chick who he got pregnant and he's trying to convince her to get rid of it. He leaked text messages, private audio conversations. I want to keep the baby. Okay. Well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. She got fresh looking bad, but there are a lot of problem areas, if not outright lies on her part that no one else is going to talk about, but me. Let's start from the beginning. She hit him <laughs> well, actually, everybody's been talking about it, but with the classic at home pregnancy test picture, she told him that you always told me you wanted me to be your baby's mother. I love you. And I did everything to be a good girlfriend. Now this is happening and you walked away. She's talking about how he walked away before he found out or she told him that she was pregnant. This was something that she did after the fact. And we're going to get into that. He said, I'll call shortly. You can see right there that he did actually call. And she actually released the audio of that conversation. And we're going to play that in a second. Then she sent him the results to an actual pregnancy test that was performed by the doctor. Now pay attention to the date of this particular test. It was on April first and also pay attention to the three to four weeks that you see there at the bottom three to four weeks that she's been pregnant it's going to mess up a timeline so stay tuned this is going to get interesting this is the part where they're negotiating then she hit him with the man up and i have an issue with that because morality and legality aside he's allowed to just put in his vote for her keeping it or not keeping it she obviously has veto power over his vote, but he's allowed to put in his vote. This is the negotiation phase, morality aside. The man up does not come into play until after she keeps it and he gets a DNA test. And that's going to be very important given what I'm about to unfold later on. Stay tuned. But anyway, let's get to the good part where her timeline and chronology does not add up. And then we're going to get to the audio. All right. Very important. She says, I met him on November 21st in Miami and I fell in love with him. I left Miami <laughs> on January 8th and traveled back to China for the Chinese New Year. And we had a long distance relationship for two months until I traveled to Barbados to meet his entire family. He made everything so real that he is serious with me. Therefore, I'm not on birth control and we had sexual behavior without protection now let me get this right this man who you are around from november 21st <laughs> all the way to january 8th that's a whopping 47 days that you had actually been around this man in person and that was enough for you to get off of birth control no matter how you slice it that is poor management <laughs> poor pussy management oh god all right, so we'll continue here. I just want to stop it at this point really quickly. Let me see if I push me back there. So <laughs> poor management, right? Well, I just want to point something out um, at, at this critical juncture here. Uh, you see, right around, let's see, the end of April. I think it was the end of uh, middle of April of last year. I put out this tweet. It was this throwaway tweet that I just, you know, I was actually responding to uh, doc, uh, Dr. Richard Reeves. Uh, we, I was just retweeting something he said, and I made this list and I made this list. And uh, amongst the things that were on this list of which there were like eight, I think eight different, eight different articles on this list. Well, the third thing that was on this list on this infamous tweet was to young men 
to if you the quickest way to becoming a high value man one of those articles was get a vasectomy in your 20s now i was being flippant of course everybody takes it dead ass seriously i also mentioned avoid family creation i also uh what was it i also added uh, avoid marriage uh get a vasectomy in your 20s uh always be lifting um stay on your stay on your mission uh, you know, get the bag. There's all, there's all kinds of other articles on there, but everybody seemed to fixate on just the vasectomy part. And I will say to Myron's credit, he had my back you know, for a time there anyways, uh, versus Sneeko and destiny and some of these other idiots who wanted to say, Oh, Rolos, the red, excuse me, not the red pill. Those guys say, get a vasectomy. And of course by, Oh, I don't know about June or like, june or july everybody was suddenly thinking that the red pill was advocating for uh let's see uh gender reassignment surgery because rollo tomasi had said something about how you need to look oh i don't know sterilize yourself as a man right and everybody wants to take it dead ass seriously and of course it's just engagement farming and they just i i, I gave them a bit of red meat they took you give them an inch and they take it and run a mile with it got it i understand the principle but now suddenly that vasectomy sweet doesn't sound so fucking crazy does it because the point I was trying to make in a rather extreme fashion, let's just say, was to protect yourself from getting baby trapped. Not unlike our good, our hero Fresh is being baby trapped right now. So suddenly that vasectomy tweet doesn't seem as, as laughable and as funny as it used to about a year ago now. So let's just keep that in mind. As we keep going through here, I'm also going to read you a, uh, actually, you know what? I think I will read it to you right now. I'm going to read to you a excerpt from, let's see, where did it go? Oh, wait a minute. I got some, I got some other good shit here for you too, but let's, uh, let's go with the rational mail. Now I also would like to point out that there was a time, I think it was in 2023 where, uh, fresh was yammering on about uh how he had never read the rational mail to a certain sneako and god knows whatever other twitch kids happened to be at the time and mentioned something that he had never read the rational mail well had he actually read the rational mail he could not avoid reading one of the nine iron rules of tomasi it's one of the lesser known rules i should say too it's actually iron rule number five which i'm going to read to you right now here it is December 6th, 2011 is when I wrote this. It's called birth control because someone is controlling the birth. There are presently, now remember I'm writing this in 2011, right? There are presently 41 different types of contraception available for women. For men, there are only two, a vasectomy or a condom, okay? Now, stop. Don't lose your fucking minds. Yes, I know. Abstinence could be a form of, of contraception. Great. All you incels and all you virgins and everybody else, congratulations. You're doing the right thing. Yes. Can we move on? Good. Let's keep going. Your only line of defense against her choice. <laughs> the only thing separating a man from a lifetime, not 18 years, a lifetime of interacting with the decider of altering the course of his life is a thin layer of latex, or else you can get a, a vasectomy, right? Thus, we come to Iron Rule of Tomasi number five. Never allow a woman to be in control of the birth. Had our good superhero, had our hero, Fresh, read the rational mail, perhaps he would have read this and taken it to heart. I don't know kind of a moot point at this day um always have protection i have had far too many guys hit me with the argument that they s implicitly trust their girlfriends to be on the pill or whatever and that she doesn't want kids only to be an unprepared daddy nine months later after the accident accident the only accident they had was not being in control of the birth themselves. In fact, I'd argue that men need to use extra caution when in a long-term relationship since the ease of getting too relaxed with her is ever present. Accidental pregnancy, 
accidental pregnancy is actually a cottage industry now for a woman with education, uh, without education, or even with and without means, an unplanned pregnancy may be a pretty good prospect, especially when every law and social expectation weighs in her favor, which is exactly what we're seeing happen with Fresh right now in 2024. These are the professional mommies. In fact, that was the title of the essay, Professional Mothers. They're professional mommies. When I counseled in Reno, I, well, I still do occasionally. Uh, when I counseled in Reno, I knew a guy who married a married this woman who had three children from two fathers who he himself had impregnated with her fourth. She was a professional mother. <sighs> Flush it. In 20, uh, excuse me, in 22, uh, in 2002, the NBA issued a highly controversial and publicized warning to professional basketball players stating that players be advised to wear condoms when having sexual intercourse with women when on road games and to, quote unquote, flush the condom down the toilet in order to dispose of the semen. This warning was the result of several paternity suits that year involving women uh, these players had slept with by retrieving the condom from the trash and self impregnating <laughs> themselves with the player's semen. The NBA had enough occurrences of this kind to warrant a league wide warning that year. All of these players are now 100% liable for the welfare of these children and their former partners by default because they are, there are no laws protecting men from fraudulent pregnancies. Now, I'll tell you, here's a, just an aside here. Since I wrote this, I have also become aware of certain cases, legal cases. Uh, I think one of them is in the state of Arizona, where a woman who uh, was doing in vitro fertilization was going to froze the sperm of her husband, who she later divorced. She petitioned the court to get to retrieve the sperm because they were going to have kids, but now they were divorced and he didn't want her to have the, obviously didn't want to be a father with this woman because they'd already divorced, but the female judge allowed it. And so now the woman has had children with her now divorced husband or previously divorced husband using his sperm. And he is now on the hook for child support, even though he didn't want to have children with his divorced wife. So that's, these are like with, with technology comes new sort of like whose choice is it? The reason I bring this up is because fresh is most likely um, experiencing this right now, which is gentlemen, there's a rule of thumb that you need to use when you are uh, contemplating whether or not you're going to wear a condom or where you're going to trust your girlfriend or wife, whatever with uh, taking birth control. And that is this. Always sit, repeat this to yourself. As soon as the sperm leaves your body, you are powerless over it. You don't get to decide what happens to you for the rest of your life. And I also made a point here to say that, and as far back as 2011, is it is a lifetime obligation, not 18 years. How do I know that? Because my daughter is 25 years old and I still pay for shit for her and I still love her and I still will be happy to be involved in her life for the rest of my life. And I think that after 18 years of doing that and you're saying, oh, I'm free and clear, I don't have to pay uh, child support anymore. That might be true, but you will still be invested financially, emotionally in that child for the rest of your life. And it's not about a financial obligation so much as it is having to see the woman who altered the course of your life for the rest of your life and the rest of that child's life. So keep that in mind. It's not just about oh, 18. Uh, what's, what's the, what's that rap song? 18 years, 18 years. You got your ass for 18 years. It's not about that. It's life. It's a life sentence. It is not 18 year sentence. Okay. So to what degree is protection implied, uh, implicitly implied? If a man does everything in his power to avoid pregnancy, barring abstinence or a vasectomy, can prove his intent and the woman still becomes pregnant, i.e. scooping it out of the fucking, uh, scooping the out of the fucking condom and impregnating herself, can prove his intent and the woman still becomes pregnant, even by fraud, the man is still liable for the pregnancy. Women are 100% protected and men are 0% protected. I can even go as far as to quote you cases where a man marrying a single mother later divorces her and is still expected to pay for future child support for a child he did not father. Even without official adoption, 
the of the child by the man meaning that was from previous a previous uh, marriage a lot of guys would like to make a moral issue out of this but it's not a question of right or wrong it's dealing with the fact of what is in the environment we find ourselves in today the fact of the matter is that unless men use prior discretion and take responsibility for the birth control not allowing women to be the sole res solely responsible for it he is 100 powerless this means bring your own condoms and flush them yourself and yes especially in a long-term relationship or a marriage that means standing firm even when she says take that thing off i'm on the pill and i want to feel you <laughs> Mothers want to be mothers. Otherwise, they'd decide not to be. Single mommies are, are far too common an occurrence to, be, uh, to, to bet the odds with the rest of your life. Wow, sounds pretty responsible on the part of that red pill guy. Oh, sounds like one of those iron rules of Tomasi. Hmm, let's dig into it. Nobody reads this shit, man. The sexual revolution had far more to do with the development of hormonal means of birth control than the legalization of abortion. Condoms have been around since before World War II, but even in the baby boom, there were far less unwanted pregnancies or single motherhood than after the advent of the pill. The pill put control of the birth into the hand, unilaterally put the control into the birth of birth into the hands of women where before it was a man's responsibility to put the rubber on and to do so correctly if they both wanted to avoid a smaller version of themselves running around the house. Uh, where you go? Oh, the choice of professionals. <laughs> Abortion rates skyrocketed in the decades after estrogen-based, uh, well, progesterone-based birth control was developed, thus promoting a need for legal and clinical regulations of abortions, as well as reforming paternity laws in the 70s. There had certainly been abortions, but the medical and back, uh, but the medical, both the medical and the back alley variety prior to this. But if you look at the increase in abortion statistics before and after the advent of con uh, convenient forms of birth control moderated by women taking it, it'll blow your mind. And now, even in the vast, even with the vast uh, variety of birth control methods available to women today and 30 plus years of safe medical abortions, we still see an increase in single mother families and abortion rates. Hmm. Why was that? I also have to point out that I believe the last numbers I have just out of off the top of my head is in the United States, the um the was it the percentage of out of wedlock births is 42 percent so 42 percent of all births in the u.s are out of wedlock right now and that's aggregate if you go and you break it down by ethnicity it gets higher depending on especially in the black community which is somewhere around 70. so but when you take them all aggregate it comes down to 42 percent bear that in mind those are that's interesting considering that we have given women unilaterally the control of birth control they have to take the fucking pill Okay. And apparently that wasn't high on, on, uh, Daisy's priority list for some reason, just some unexpected reason. We don't know why, right? Not yet. One would think that these statistics would be lower in light of all this modernization and the leaps women have made culturally since the sexual revolution, but sadly, no. In fact, the single mother birth rate has climbed adjusted for population since leveling off in the, in the 1980s. And abortion is just as popular as ever when new methods such as the morning after pill and RU-286 are readily available and conveniently uh, and conveniently the social ills as a result are placed squarely on deadbeat dads rather than women choosing to have children. That's why I put accidental births in parentheses because there are no accidental pregnancies if a woman wants to have a child she will have the child if she does not want to have the child she will not have the child and we need to stop putting it in the retrospective so whenever i say well you know abortion this abortion that if i talk about abortion whatsoever uh in a red pill sense or even just in a clinical sense the first thing out of anyone's mouth, whether they are wokesy progressive liberals or they are trad con died in the wool, you know, born again Christian uh, trad cons will say the same fucking thing. You should have kept it in your pants. Well, that is irrelevant. It is immaterial once the pregnancy has already taken place because only women have control as to whether or not that child gets born or it doesn't get born. 
That's why I've said, and I will reiterate it here one more time for you, is abortion is the final ultimate expression of hypergamy. Nothing says he ain't the one like being have, having the unilateral power to end his genetic legacy in utero. Nothing controls the human reproductive process more than modern westernized females today. They are the ones who have virtually unilateral control over it. So when we listen to, uh, we're about to listen to this, when we listen to Fresh talking, you know, trying to make his pitch and his appeal to say, hey, you know, let's well, basically let's get an abortion. From a moralistic standpoint, from my personal opinion, abortion is wrong. I will tell you that right now. Nobody ever asks me that. They never say, Rolla, what do you think of, do you think that abortion is wrong or right? I will tell you right now, abortion is wrong. Okay. That's me. Okay. From a clinical empirical standpoint, I will ask people this. When people want it, like when, usually when I were talking about uh, abortion and I'm talking to somebody who's sort of like a wokesy liberal, right? The first thing I always want to say is this, is why does abortion exist? What, what, what function, what latent purpose does abortion serve? It serves to give women a fail safe against bad reproductive choices. That's what it's, what it's meant to do. And when you put it in those terms, liberals lose their fucking minds because it's always about, well, she's not ready for it. She, what about she's, she's an underserved, she's in a, in a bad class. She doesn't make enough money. He should have kept it in his pants. He, there, I mean, there's just this litany of these external reasons, but the real reason is it is a fail safe for bad reproductive choices. End of story. When I'm talking to conservatives, the first, and if, if I ever got into this, I, I was really hoping I'd be able to, to bring this up at some point with uh, like Lila Rose or somebody else. But whenever we have these conversations about uh, uh, abortion with trad cons, the first thing I say is, well, I, I, per me personally, I think abortion is wrong. But what I will say this is that, do you believe that abortion is murder? Because that is exactly the, it's always this catchphrase. It's always this, abortion is murder. Okay, if you honestly believe that abortion is murder, then are you prepared to convict and sentence, in some cases to death, depending on the state, women who have abortions? Because if you're going to say that it is murder, then you're going to have to uh, also what what is the penalty for murder? What is the penalty for premeditated murder? Because that's what it is. It's premeditated. And then of course, what they'll do is they'll say, well, oh, it's uh, it's the abortion doctors. They should be they should be sentenced too. They're the they're the trigger men, right? They're like he's he's the he's the hired assassin. But if you're going to hire somebody to kill somebody else, you are on the hook for the same premeditated murder as the guy who's pulling the trigger. So if you're going to hire somebody to kill your husband, you're just as guilty for that murder as the guy who actually pulled the trigger. So end of story, same thing applies. Do you, if you think abortion is murder, should women be sentenced for murder one if they have abortions? And of course they, they hem and holler and they twist in the wind whenever you say something like that. Those are the empirical arguments. Those are the empirical things that, that a lot of people ideologically don't want to wrap their heads around. But if you're going to ask me whether I think abortion is right or it's wrong, I'm going to say abortion is wrong and you should have the child and you should take responsibility for your actions. That's Rolo Tomasi talking. That's not the red pill this, the red pill that. The red pill is what's the function of it? What's the function? <laughs> That's a great illustration of the red pill. What's the function of, uh, of abortion? And if you think that the, the function is murder, then should we then not hold women accountable for murder one? That's red pill. Rolo Tomasi is saying, I think that's wrong. So. There you go. Let's continue. Okay. And, the, and right on cue. This isn't a scientific problem. It's a cultural one. Mothers want to be mothers. Men are only fathers when a woman decides this for him, even in the happiest of marriages. I think, I hope, we'll see uh, a second sexual revolution once a male form of hormonal contraception is tested and available. And don't, please, let me just stop you right there. Rollo doesn't know about the new male pill. I know. Trust me. I know. This is 2011. Please back the fuck up. We're going to keep going here. All right. But you can bet dicks to donuts <laughs> that every interested party from the religious to the feminist will fight this method's release to the public at large and come up with every sort of veiled explanation for its demonization in order to put the agency of birth control exclusively into men's control. 
This is why I think that we have not developed or had the sort of the will to develop uh, a male form of contraception, like uh, like a male pill, because we make too much money. We've standardized for too long on a gynocentric social order that has depended on one thing that women can have sex and not figuratively, virtually not have to worry about pregnancy until they want to, until they want to have the child, until they want to have a child out of wedlock or in wedlock with a, oh, I don't know, PJ Washington, for example, and Brittany, uh, Brittany uh, uh, Renner, <laughs> Bendy. Brittany Renner. Uh, who, by the way, wrote a book about doing exactly that. <laughs> um, and apparently, uh, you know, we've got Daisy Chen pulling a Brittany Renner on our boy Fresh right now. And yes, she's lying. And yes, Fresh was trying to push her out of the out of the scene at the same time. There's a lot more that's going on. Again, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds with what was going on behind the scenes because I, it's going to come out anyway. So me saying it now is not going to make that much difference. But uh, just understand that there's a lot. There was a lot more to this story that that even this guy is really describing here. Okay. So uh, last but not least, um, I sincerely doubt men will forget to take the pill <laughs> or have their accidents in the numbers that women do. Imagine this, imagine if it was, imagine there's no birth control pill for women, but there's only a birth control pill for men. Imagine what the social implications of that would be. Like men are like, you know what? I don't have any kids. I'm just going to keep taking this pill and banging chicks as much as I want. And women would have to go to men and say, please put a baby in me. <laughs> imagine the society where a guy controls who get controls which women breed and which women don't breed imagine that fucking society all right uh anyways there's more to iron rule of tomasi number five but i'll i'll let you guys go and read now that i piqued your interest please go and check that out now before we move on a little bit i need to uh address something here when it comes to the iron rules of Tomasi, because people, certain individuals seem to think that these are prescriptions. They are not fucking prescriptions. They are not prescriptions any more than the 48 laws of power are prescriptions. And I have to point this out because I know a lot of people want to say, well, Rolo's telling you what to do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you that these are, these are laws in the same way that the laws of power are laws. These are rules in the same way, I should say. It's not a list of do all of these nine rules and you'll live a better life. That's not. That's not what they're, they're, they're rules that outline dynamics the same way as the 48 laws of power outline dynamics of power. So I want to point one thing out here, just to give you a little bit of backstory here in 1980 or 1998, when the 48 laws of power was published by Robert Greene, fantastic author, he was better in his early days. Um, when the book was first published and it became a, it just became a hit. It was a number one bestseller. That's when being a bestseller actually meant something. Um, they banned the book from being in uh, the libraries of like of prisons. So if you were a prisoner, in, like you're in jail, you couldn't read the 48 Laws of Power. They banned it. Why did they do that? Because people thought it was a list of prescriptions because they thought this is going to teach these psychotic you know, Machiavellian sociopaths, how to better manipulate power. And we can't have that. Well, as Robert Greene said, and of course now anybody can read it, but at the time, everybody thought it was an evil book because they thought it was a fucking recipe book. They thought it was a fucking prescriptions of here's how you become a, a powerful, tyrannical, you know, you know, demagogue leader, right? That's what they thought people were going to use it for, but it's not. It is outlining dynamics of power in terms of laws. And it has to be because there's individual iterations of that, of, of power, right? So the 48 laws of power, there's, there's some definite four laws of, of, of power that are unethical. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I forget which one it was. Uh, I think it might've been nine or 10 where it's, uh, it's, Always get other people to do all the work, but take all of the credit for that work. It's basically a you know, plagiarism, you know, get people to do all the work for you and then take all the credit for that work. Okay. That's pretty unethical. And you could even make a case that it's immoral too. Right? Okay, fine. Does that mean you're going to use that? Does that mean that that's a suggestion? Does that mean that Robert Greene is saying you better go and be a plagiarist? No, it doesn't. It is outlining, defining a law of power as a fucking law. 
That's the same thing as the same impetus. That's the same inspiration I had when I was writing the nine iron rules of Tomasi. And by the way, the only place you will find the nine iron rules of Tomasi collected together is in my first book, The Rational Mail, available on Amazon. Um, I deliberately kept those separate as separate posts on the rational mail. And I, even before that, when I was writing, uh, the, having the conversations about those nine hour rules on the so swab forums, I deliberately kept those forum to topics separate from each other. I never collected them in one place because I knew that this is exactly the way people would take it. They would think, oh, it's like the 12 rules for life. No, it's not. They are power dynamics. They are red pill dynamics. Whether you follow them or not, I don't give two fucks whether you do or not. But you know who gives a fuck about iron rule number five right now? Walter. <laughs> Fresh Prince CEO definitely is, is learning the, the, the lesson here. I didn't say you have to do this to be red pill. I just said this is a principle that you might want to consider. How you apply that is all up to you. So don't give me this horse shit about, oh, it's a prescription. Fuck you. You're just too stupid to see that it's not a prescription. End of story. All I'm going to say. Uh, where do we go? Here we go. Let's, let's, let's finish up with this guy real quick here. But that's not the worst part because get this. She says, I was ready to have a baby with him and build a family. He asked me many times, well, what if you get pregnant? My answer towards him was always, yes, I want to keep the baby. I don't mind have a baby with you. So she was gone for two months and then she came back. And after a couple days of being back, she's talking baby, 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 baby. Sending him cute pictures of what <laughs> black and Asian kids look like. She was doing this long before she ever confirmed that she was pregnant or had legitimate reason to believe that she was pregnant. She just started out with this right after she got back from China, but it gets worse. It says after a few days, he asked me to move out. He, more, he likely had her living in one of his houses. He owns uh, you know, quite a few properties. So he had her living in one of the properties that he didn't have a tenant in. So after a few days, he asked her to move out. Again, this was before he found out that she was pregnant. It says he stopped coming home. He disappeared for three nights without explanation. I called him. He never answered when I did nothing wrong. So I moved out and booked the first flight to New York. And on March 30th, I had a pregnancy test. Now that shaky timeline comes into play. When she said she went to Barbados to meet his family, and that's when it all felt so real and he was being so serious. And then she got off of the birth control. That would have been sometime between the 9th, 10th, and 11th, where she started filling all the feel goods on the insides and, and got off of birth control. We know that because she said they made it back to Miami on the 12th, and Fresh was missing from the Fresh and Fit podcast during the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Myron was doing it by himself. Now, some would argue that Myron has been doing it by himself since 2020, but that's a separate debate. We're not here <laughs> for cold. that. Nevertheless, <laughs> they returned to Miami on the 12th. So let's get the math right. From the 12th to the 30th, we're talking 7, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 days of you being fully back in his presence and off birth control and you now know that you're pregnant. And even if we go by the results from the actual pregnancy test with the doctor that she got on April 1st, of which it takes three to four weeks to actually confirm that you're pregnant from one of those type of tests. If we start for counting from the 12th, we are legitimately counting seven, 14, 20 days. So even on the low end of the three to four weeks that you would have to be pregnant to confirm pregnancy, it's still coming up a day short on that. Birth control, when you get off of that, your hormones don't just snap back into place. No, it takes two to six months for somebody to be able to eventually get pregnant again once they get off of birth control. So in order for this timeline to have to add up exactly right, she would have had to be on one of the do it yourself, uh, put it in and pull it out yourself <laughs> diaphragms. She would have. All right, let me let me hold off real quick because I have, I have a personal story. When I got my wife pregnant, I did so by design 
contrary to popular belief where everyone says, oh, Rolo got trapped into a, a, because his wife got pregnant. No, dumbass. I've been married for almost two years, just about two years at that point. And I've been married to my wife for 27 and a half. My daughter's 25. So but about a year and a half, right? Yeah, a little more. Um, it took me four months to knock my wife up once she went off of birth control. Okay. We deliberately wanted to have a baby. We tried and boy, it was a lot of fun. Let me, I will explain one of the best times of my life. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm ovulating. Let's go. Okay. Get out, boy. I'm coming home from work. Uh, four months from the time she went off to the time she's called me up and said, you're going to be a dad four months. So uh, he's right. There's something that just doesn't line up for me right here. And I'll tell you, man, it's, it, it does. This seems kind of shady to, on the 11th or the 12th. She would have had to been ovulating. Then he would have had to been Steph Curry with the shot at that moment. <laughs> just for them to fall, just not even making the three to four weeks timeline for her to be pregnant. That coupled with the fact that she was gone for two whole months and then came back talking about baby, 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 I want to have your baby. It sounded like she came back pregnant. It sounded like she got pregnant when she was in China. But Fresh was gassing her up, telling her that he loved her and wanted her to meet the family <laughs> and he's rich. And that baby don't come out black. <laughs> That baby comes out like China, like me, like Mandarin Chinese and shit. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be that? Fuck that would that be that's some Maury Povich shit right there. <laughs> the baby doesn't come out black. <laughs> Instead of the other way around, the baby's white <laughs> Chinese. And so she figured, hey, he's probably make a better dad than the person that actually got her pregnant. But I digress. Here's the audio. All right. I want the baby because I, I want don't want to kill the baby i don't want to kill nobody i don't want to you're not they just give you a pill and it's over no no i'm pregnant no but that's what i'm saying the pill they just give it to you from a doctor and then you're good i am pregnant i can't pretending like nothing happened i can't in my religion we don't kill all right this is the part where a lot of people are saying this sounds very very scripted on her part because if you listen to her in other videos, she's not like really stuttery like this. And uh, there's some other shit that goes down. You're not killing. Okay. I want to keep the baby. Okay. Well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. Okay, so what you gonna do? Yeah. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do with me? Pay attention to this part right here. And what you gonna do to me? Nothing. Well, why did I do anything to you? Nothing. Well, why did I do anything to you? No, I know. So, like, how are you gonna? So that's fresh avoiding a trap right there, just to uh, clarify things. Deal with this. By by saying I don't want a baby, that's all. I mean, I'm to, to the doctor, I guess. To the doctor. So you want abortion? I mean, yeah. Why do you want a kid now? And why do you make me pregnant now? Because I'm like. There's no way that that's true. But then it's like, oh, wow. Like, so just think about it. It's mean to be. God Sorry? wants, to, God wants you to have the baby. Definitely not. It is. God <laughs> wants you to have a baby seven years. Later. I need a sound drop of that. Definitely not. <laughs> Never happened. And then you're relate in the relate your for a month and I'm pregnant. What does that mean? Well, like it, it now, I just think about if like if you force me to baby, then you're a sin. Well, we already sinned by having sex, but it's too late now, you know. But honestly, if that was the case, then my ex-wife would have the baby. You know, I'm just saying. Look, I get it, but we're not together. 
you want to get a baby? I don't want a baby. Anyways, that's it. That's the gist of it. I also want to throw a few things out here real quick, too, because I did find some stuff on... Oops, I can't do that. Wait a minute. The, you know, I, I'd rather than get too deep in the weeds here. There's a, there's talk that she's in a, she was an escort as well. So I uh, just want to throw that one. I don't think... I don't know if anybody's really mentioned that outside of, like, say, Reddit, but it's going around. It's making the circles right now that she was an escort. Um, her excuse me her um her being what was it miss asia or some shit like that it's not even really miss asia i forget what the name of this thing is where'd it go uh can i oh cool all right here we go uh let me let me throw a few things out here that maybe people aren't really realizing here now this is me being loyal to my good friend fresh so just just bear with me here um she had an escort page even if it's even if it was fake, it had escort like pictures that weren't on her IG. Her IG is now down. It's been deactivated. Just so you know, I mean, she's a good looking girl. Don't get me wrong. It's the, she's exactly the kind of chick that I would expect fresh to go after, by the way. And I know his type, too. Uh, she travels around the world in international business class, especially Dubai, and complained about domestic business class. Uh, <laughs> uh, she uh, herself said her family is comfortable, not wealthy. Comfortable cannot afford international business class all over the world. Her so-called Miss China title was a fake trashy one in Lebanon, and her actual name isn't recorded anywhere online except the pregnancy test, Miss, Ms. Jing Chen. So I guess she's not Daisy. Uh, that's why I was wondering if it was Daisy or Jing. Uh, these, fake pre these fake pageants are often held just so escorts... Uh, can uh, use them as uh, sex workers, I should say, can use them as a photo op uh, to up their uh, to up their rates. Uh, you can tell she, it's fake because actual Miss Chinas use their names and um, a simple search can find them. You think that Miss uh, you really think Miss China will be 90 percent plastic and fake and a BBL and orange tan and reconstructed face she does not fit the chinese beauty standards at all she already admitted fresh gave her a minimum of fifteen thousand dollars for a half of for half of a van cleef bracelet what the fuck is a van cleef bracelet i don't even know maybe i'm an idiot for not knowing that but like, I, what, what is a van cleef bracelet um she previously lied about it hmm what else could she be lying about she is dating she's she is dating slash fresh from fresh and fit for, for God's sake. You think a rich international Chinese woman whose parents have uh, the funds for her to jet set in international business class would go for fresh <laughs> old money date dates, old money, new money dates, new money. Fresh is new money via podcasting. Daisy is new money via international sugar babying. <laughs> Her grammar and English, even for someone where uh, that's the second language, is utter dog shit. She sounds extremely unintelligent. You know where wealthy Chinese send their kids uh, for high school and college? International schools and top U.S. universities. Speaking as someone who went to a top university with plenty of international Chinese students, their English is extremely good, and they don't talk like a ratchet Kardashian wannabe. Uh, and then lastly, immediately... She talks lawyers and money when discussing potential pregnancy and blasts it on IG. You don't think a girl that comes from a wealthy family would immediately want to destroy her if she were caught with Fresh's baby or her parents wouldn't force her to? Uh, you think uh, it actually brings shame? Do you think it wouldn't actually bring shame to her family unironically? Again, your own conclusions, but don't just immediately think she's a saint just because you don't like fresh and immediately come to her defense because she's a, an, an Asian woman with your Cheeto and crusted white knight fingers <laughs> are shaking at the chance to defend her. Actually, look at the evidence and come to the most a likely scenario. She's an international sugar baby, a.k.a. professional Dubai porta potty and knew damn well what she was doing with Fresh or at the at least had his outcome as a potential outcome. Uh, Fresh needs to at this point, I think a lot of this stuff is going to end up coming out. I'm just I'm I'm picking this up from a Reddit, uh, a Reddit thread right now. Uh, just so you guys get an idea where it's coming from. Um, I think that's probably good enough. Either way, 
So let me let me uh, end today's show by saying that uh, fresh fucked up, and I think that part of loyalty to your friends is letting them know they fucked up. And I'm pretty sure Myron let him know he fucked up. And if you guys want to say Myron was emotional, yes, he was. Just because I call this show the Rational Mail, this podcast the Rational Mail, doesn't mean I'm fucking Mr. Spock, okay? As a matter of fact, if you have actually read my books, I talk about emotional, being emotional, and how it's part of the human experience. It's it's quite all right to get righteously fucking angry at shit if you're fucking in the right and somebody else is in the wrong, especially if they need to have it emphasized to them. There's nothing wrong with an emotional response. There's nothing wrong. There is if you dwell on it, if you live your life by it, if you make your decisions based on it. Sure, absolutely. But there's no way I would ever tell anybody to not be, yo, you're being, you doesn't sound very rational to me. Yeah, because I'm a human being and I'm not trying to say that you, uh, that I'm not. Everybody's going to be emotional at some point because that's part of the, our human experience. Okay. I keep telling you guys instinct, emotion, and reason. And those are the three modalities or the uh, processes that human beings use to interpret their environment and their surroundings, instinct, emotion, and reason. 